Hello everyone, Wade from High Tech Legion here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the Intelligent NAS software for the Ficus N2310. Also, I'm going to show you the web user interface, uh, which gives you all the options that come with the N2310, and stay tuned for uh, some overview of the mobile software that's available for the NAS as well. So when you first get your NAS, you're going to install your hard drives into it and it's going to initialize. What you're going to want to do is go to install.thecus.com and download the intelligent NAS program that is appropriate for your operating system, whether that be Windows, Macintosh, etc. When you run the intelligent NAS utility, you get this screen here. It does a scan of your network. One thing to keep in mind is if you are running a software firewall, you will have to shut the firewall off in order for it to find your device on the network. What we get after it finds the device is the host name, the IP address. This is important to uh, remember because this will allow you to access the device through the web. Also good for using in the mobile apps, etc. You have your MAC address of the NAS, the model number, the OS build. In this case, it's the GIS OS 6, also known as the firmware, and the status of the device. In this case, we've already set up the device, so it's giving us ready. If it were uh, fresh out of the box, what you would see is an initializing there. And so you would hit next, and it would give you a screen that gives you the options to create your RAID array. Automatic setup or a manual setup. The automatic setup is going to create a JBOD connection if you only have one drive, but if you have two drives populated in there, you're going to get a RAID 1 array, which means it's going to be striped. So you're going to have a duplicate copy of your data on both drives, so if one of them were to fail, you don't lose everything. The manual setup will also allow you to create a RAID 0 one, which is more for speed, doesn't give you any protection of your data at all. So the third step is to create a Ficus ID and DDNS connection if you wanted to use that. So I've done that already and it is showing me complete and giving me that information. So from here, we could hit start browser and that'll go straight to the NAS web user interface, but I've already opened it here. So here we have the web user interface opened in our browser. As you can see, I'm on my local network. The only thing I've added is um, I put 192.168.052, which was the IP address that the intelligent NAS software told me to go to. And that brings me to the login page. What we're going to do, we're going to click admin. Default password is admin. It's going to log us in and give us options for our shared folder or RAID management. Under shared folders, you can see your all your folder structure and the file systems that's being used, whether it's public or not, and whether what the description is. You can also add a folder here or set up network file services or Samba or an access control list if you have that in place. RAID management gives you a look at your RAID itself. We've got one RAID. It's only got two devices, two drive bays, so that's all you're going to have in this case. Um, what type of RAID it is, the status, which disks are used, your total capacity, and how much space is used. So, if we close that, then you have your control panel here. Control panel has all kinds of utilities and tools in it, and we'll go over some of that very quickly. I just want to finish showing you the um, initial user interface. Here you can do a search. This is a quick link to the system log. You have an 
extensive help file. You also have which user is logged in. You can change the password. You can change the language. It gives you a quick look at uh, the OS build that's being used and you can also log out. Down here you have a quick link to your network. You have a quick link to disk information and a quick link to RAID management which is also here. Down here there is a power button that allows you to reboot the device or power it off. Under the control panel you have a general tab which just gives you the manufacturer, product number, firmware, and uptime. You have status, which gives you status of services that are running on the device. You have another link to your system log. Date and time. Syslog management. If you were running a syslog server, you would be able to set this up notifications so you can uh, turn on email notifications and beep notifications if for certain types of events you can set up a schedule for the NAS to be on or off so it can automatically turn on and off change the administrator password under config management this allows you to download your configuration and also upload your configuration so if you were uh, needing to restore like a big access control list for example you can set that up you can restore to factory defaults here you got your power management file system check if you put click apply this will force a system check of the file system when uh, you reboot it under your networking information you can change the host name. You can set the IP address to be manual or DHCP. It's automatically pulling this information from my router. You can change the size of the jumbo frames. And you can also set IPv6, which is off by default, a note on the on the device as well, and the default gateway. under UI login functions you have some of the modules that are already set up and you can enable or disable the login function for there. Hardware information gives you information on your the CPU and the memory, the network interface card, the USB, what's controlling the USB and the SATA controller. User access log gives you uh, an enable here and so every time a file is accessed or changed you would be able to uh, see this in the log you can set it on certain folders and um, certain protocols as well <laughs> under storage you have disk information disk information gives you a the model of each drive also the capacity and the firmware version. Smart utility as well as a way to force the detection of bad blocks if uh, you start to have performance issues or something like that you might want to run a scan. RAID management is the same page that's seen here and also down here so they have links to that in multiple places. Next we have the file sharing privilege section. And this section is very important because it allows you to set up additional users for your NAS and also permissions to what folders they have access to. So you can go into local user configuration and you can add a user, you can edit a user, or you can remove one. You have local group configuration. So you can add a group, say you want five, you have five users and you want them to all be in the same group to only have access to one folder this is an easy way to control it and then if you had to add them to another folder for example you could just edit the group without having to edit all five users batch input allows you to use a CSV file 
to upload a large number of users all at once. It gives you the example of how to uh, configure that file down here. You have your shared folder link, which is the same here. It just gives you a view of the folders that are being used and also user quota. So a user quota allows you to set up quotas for um, users so that they only use up a certain amount of space on the NAS before they can't save anything else. You also have a user group backup option which allows you to download those user groups and restore them in the event of a problem. Network services this is where it gets interesting because this is where all the magic happens with the NAS as far as being able to access it. So you've got Samba. You've got the option for the Samba service and you can change any of the options for this. Of course these are defaulted to on so this service will work. No problem. You have Apple file protocol compatibility you have network file services compatibility and you have FTP access. FTP access you have FTP service enabled, secure FTP enabled and um, also you can change the port and external IP as well as the character set and whether anonymous access is used. You can also set an limit on the upload bandwidth and download bandwidth so it doesn't use up your entire connection. Personally I'd recommend that you turn off the regular FTP service and set this to be secure only just so that it's encrypted uh, when you're accessing your device. Web service support so this gives you uh, enabling for the web service as well as secure web service though it will look for a certificate file if uh, or you can load a certificate file if you have one created so that you can um, have secure access to it. UPnP service enabled by default just a quick little description in there of what the device is. You also have Bonjour service which is disabled by default so you can enable it. If you're in an Apple environment the Bonjour service tends to uh, work very well. SSH access if you wanted to use that for some reason and your DDNS information so if you were using something other than the, the thickest DDNS you can enable uh, use of um, one of these other ones here. UPnP port management so this tells you all the UPnP mappings on from between the device and your router. You can see it picked up my router information and also what's uh, been pushed to it and you can add rules or delete rules in here as well. WebDAV. The WebDAV environment is pretty important because this is how you would access um, your device through your mobile app if you wanted to use that. Auto thumbnail so if you're backing up a whole bunch of pictures if this is enabled it will automatically create a thumbnail for um, accessing the photos with the T on the go app so that you don't have to download the whole thing just to just to look through it. And your Thekus ID. So your Thekus ID is what you set up initially when you set up the device and also your DDNS registration here. So this is where if you're using the thekuslink.com page for your DDNS, this is where you would change that or set it up initially if you didn't do it in the beginning. Next we get to the application server section of the UI and so this shows the power of the Thekus OS 6. What you have here actually is a way to install applications onto your NAS so that you can have it do certain things and in a way this makes it uh, makes you able to customize it to your needs.
So by default you have the iTunes server and the Pixa server installed on the device. You also have Dashboard which you can install. And if we go to NAS applications here, this shows you what's already installed. Um, you can click update all or you can install certain things. Plex is another um, module that you can install in here and as a media server. So app installation is another place that you can upload apps to it and it says right here down in the description and this is where you would go if you wanted to get apps from the Ficus website for your device that aren't already in the NAS application page. Backup utilities. This is really kind of cool because you have rsync so you can use rsync and a target server so that you can back a, sync the uh, NAS and that server. You can do a backup restore of your access control list. Data burn allows you to plug in a DVD CD, DVD, or Blu-ray burner into the USB port on the back of the device and back up your NAS directly to that CD. So you can have a physical piece of media, you know, uh, that you want to take off site maybe. You also have DataGuard. DataGuard allows you to set a source path for uh, it to back up the NAS to. You can also back up USB devices to your NAS or back up the NAS to your USB devices uh, through those ports as well. External devices, so these are a couple other things that you can have the capability for. You can plug in a printer or you can also plug in a UPS to it and this will give you information if it's a supported device on those connections. Hope you enjoyed this overview of the Ficus OS 6 and the N2310 NAS software. Stay tuned for the mobile software information and definitely don't forget to check out the unboxing video. For the full review see www.hitechlegion.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter pages. Take care.